In this tutorial, we will show you how to replace the power modules and control stack from a Radian inverter charger. The tools required are a Phillips and flathead screwdriver, socket wrench with 8 inch extension, a 10 millimeter socket, 13 millimeter wrench, and a inch pound torque wrench. Note, it is recommended to save the existing configuration file of the inverter that is to be repaired to an SD card. First, we will need to power down and disconnect all power sources from the Radian prior to replacement of internal parts. Remove the stainless steel load center cover by opening it 90 degrees, then lifting the hinges upward, then out. Unscrew the six Phillips screws to remove the dead front of the load center. Turn off the following breakers in this order. AC out breaker, grid AC input breaker, generator AC input breaker, main DC breakers, PV input and charge controller output or GFDI. Verify no voltage is present from the terminals. Battery voltage, AC hot out L1 and L2, grid AC in L1 and L2, generator AC in L1 and L2, PV input. Next, remove the 22 screws that attach the cover to the chassis. Disconnect the RTS or remote temperature sensor and communications cable from the control stack. For model GS8048 only, remove the control stack center plate by unscrewing the two Phillips screws. Disconnect all external AC wiring by unlocking all tabs from the terminal block. This will release the tension and allow you to pull the wires from the terminals. Disconnect the fan wires by pinching their connectors and pulling to the right. Note, it is important to have the connections in proper order. It is recommended to label or photograph for later reference. Next, disconnect wires from the power module to the PCBA. Depending on the model, you may have six or four wires. Depending on the model, you either need to unlock the tabs to pull the wires from the terminals or insert a flat screwdriver into the terminal block slot, then lever the screwdriver outwards to release the tension from each wire. Disconnect the ribbon cables from the PCBA by pressing outwards on their clips, and then gently pull the connector away from the board. Pull the connector and not the ribbon cable. Remove the two lower nuts. Loosen the two upper nuts, but do not remove entirely. Push the entire control stack up about a half inch to allow the keyhole slots in the back plate of the module to clear the upper two nuts. Then pull the control stack outward. Disconnect the ribbon cables from each power module by pressing outwards on the clips, then pulling to the right. Disconnect the power module's negative and positive DC connections from the bottom using a 13 millimeter wrench. Remove the battery terminal nuts by turning them counterclockwise, which secure the power module to the chassis. It may be necessary to pry them with a screwdriver. Tip: Remove the four Phillips screws that hold the two 175A DC breakers to leave space for the far right nut to be removed. Remove the two upper nuts from each power module located above the fan using a socket wrench with a 10 millimeter socket. Using the two hand holds provided on the power module, Lift up at least one inch and then outward to remove the power module. Installing the replacements. Insert the replacement control stack into the chassis and align it to the two upper half loosened bolts. Replace the two lower nuts and torque them to a value of 60 to 68 inch pounds. Tighten the upper two nuts to a torque value of 60 to 68 inch-pounds. 
Reconnect all AC wires to the bottom of the control stack by unlocking each tab. Insert the two power modules into their designated spots. Replace the two upper 10mm nuts on each power module and torque to a value of 60 to 68 inch pounds. Replace the four DC negative and positive nuts to secure the power module to the chassis. Connect each power module to the DC negative and positive bus bars. Replace four 13 millimeter bolts and washers. Connect the power module AC wires back to the control stack depending on the terminal strip type by either unlocking the tabs or inserting a flat screwdriver and levering it outwards. Connect the two fan wires back to the control stack. Connect one end of the ribbon cable to each power module and the other end to the proper control stack slot. Left module connects to the right slot while the right module connects to the left slot. For models GS8048 only, replace the control stack center plate. Reconnect the RTS communications cable and auxiliary terminals if it applies. Before replacing the front cover, ensure no tools or loose hardware has been left inside the chassis. Also, ensure all electrical connections have been made. AC input, output, ground terminations, communications cable, ribbon cables from both ends, power module cables, and fan cables. With the Phillips screwdriver, replace the 22 screws that attach the cover to the chassis. Note, do not over torque the screws, this may warp the cover. Replace the dead front of the load center. Replace the stainless steel cover. Power up procedure and output voltage check. Turn power sources back on. Apply power to the inverter by turning on the DC circuit breaker. Keep AC breakers off. You will hear each fan cycle once, then bolt together. Once the inverter is powered up, from the Mate 3, press the inverter button, then press on. This will allow the inverter to start inverting power. Verify the output voltage reads 240 volts displayed on the Mate 3. Using the Mate 3, reprogram the configuration file previously saved or make the necessary changes per your application. Note, Radian's GS3548E and GS4048A must be reprogrammed for their specific model by entering the installer password and changing the model select. Turn on the AC output breaker. Turn on the grid input breaker. Turn on the generator input breaker. Turn on the charge controller breaker or the GFDI. Turn on the PV input breaker. 